Welcome back to the Piney Woods Homestead, y'all. Today, we are going to butcher this hog. Yesterday, I was fortunate enough that my brother George came over. Yeah, I got several, I got two brothers. Uh, George came over and helped me get the hog slaughtered and cleaned and broke in halves and put into that homemade cooler that I showed you the other day. But this morning, it's 20 degrees. We're gonna get that pig out one side at a time and break it down and I'll do my best to show you how I do it here on the Piney Woods Homestead. All right, come up here, Byron. And... Is that cool you made? Yeah. Get this out of the way. All right, so he sat here overnight Probably didn't even need ice. You had no kidding. And this is how you tow the hog. You slide that door back to the push it clear, it don't have to go all the way. So the first thing that I do with my meat saw is I wanna get this ham off and you'll notice the spine running right here and the front of the ham. You kinda of wanna go at an angle right behind that spine. <laughs> Before I even go that door, I'll get this side pulled away. And you go all the way up to the rib right there. Getting out of the way. Yeah, just getting it out of the way. Just till it breaks. And there's my ham. And they say that a ham, if it weighs 20 pounds, your hog's gonna weigh 200. That's kind of how that works. I normally take the feet off before I hang him, but yesterday, man, it was all I could do just to get this done. So I'll go ahead and do that now. There is a, a couple of joints that you can work with, but I'm just gonna saw it just because I wanna be quick and efficient and get it done. Cause I want that, I want that shank here in a little while. And that's how you do that. going to be sausage later. I'm just loading them in this clean Clorox cooler for now. Now the next thing that I do is I'll come up and count my ribs over. I got one, two, three, four. About the fourth or fifth rib is where I'm going to cut this. So I'll make me a little mark so I can see it. see here yeah that's about where I want it. And you want to go straight across just so you get through the bone and you'll feel you'll feel it once it's through the bone Break it on down. <clears throat> All right, I'll go ahead and get this took down. And basically, what you do is you just made that cut up to the belly right there. So now you line up. Yeah, ain't much fat on this pig because we leaned him out real good. 
basically line up that about right there. going to be your line and I'll we'll go ahead and work on the belly to start with there's no lard here notice that there's like very little lard you know um, that's because we leaned him so well now if you want lard you want to feed your pigs a little more and when I, I mean we didn't starve no pigs they got on average over 120 days after having been weaned five to five and a half pounds of feed a day and that was 75 percent 15% feed and six or seven percent whole kernel corn. We we feed them whole kernel because we like to hear them crunch. <laughs> and they like it too. Alright, so these are gonna be spare ribs. And basically what you're gonna do, let me go ahead and um, grab some of this membrane right here. See that? I'm just pulling that membrane off. So that when you go to cook it, you ain't got all that tough mess on there. See, very little, we lost very little fat. And I keep my bits of fat because we've got uh, a deer up there in the freezer ready to be ground cubed up ready to be ground in the burger that Kyla got this year and uh, we'll mix fat with it to make our burger meat there's actually a little fat right there but I'm gonna leave it because there's not much there's plenty of lean it looks like so that's good so you want to take your knife let me get this other membrane of it meat hook comes in handy for getting up under this stuff I don't know about y'all but that time change got me this morning yeah I usually complain but I'm looking forward to more daylight <laughs> yeah oh, I know because the time you get home from your day job You'll be able to see to do a few things. Mm -hmm. That's clean enough. All right, so these are gonna be spares and you can feel those bones out here. So what I like to do is I kind of come away from those bones and just score it. Keep feeling so that you, and I score it because now we're gonna take it off. The spares. I'm gonna get up here under this side. And you wanna work it fairly close to the bone because you don't want to cut into your bacon. And I'm no professional butcher, but I've done several pigs now. I hadn't had anybody complain when they've been sitting at the dinner table. No. <laughs> it's hard to complain with your mouth full. <laughs> That's exactly right. I'm about to edit that part. <laughs> Sorry, bump, brother. A little bumper sticker uh, a buddy of mine had. It said, uh, don't criticize the farmer with your mouth full. <laughs> That's exactly right. No, we ain't eating nothing now. This is good. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> you bring out the moonshine I'll have to you. I got some up there <laughs> for special occasions such as uh bad chest colds and stuff and special, I don't think special I... occasions like Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> That's a nice big old butcher block, man. Yeah, um, I guess you made that. Well actually Wesley 
Okay. My brother made it. I gave him the lumber and uh, he built it. <laughs> so just trim it up a little bit. And it's hard to grip. But you notice how the meat's cold all the way through. It's firm. The old timers, they would kill it the same day, knock it in the head with a back of an axe or a sledgehammer, stick it, and um, hang it up, or they, they scald it, hang it up, gut it, and butcher it all the same day. And I've done that. And I don't like it. It's, I don't like putting my hands on that warm, jello -y, jiggly meat. But there's a small rack of spare ribs, which would be pretty good. Let me throw this in the cooler. Cooler. All right, so now this is all going to be bacon. And you know what? Look at that. Wow. That looks good. <laughs> that looks good. That looks good. I'd say that that worked out, yeah. um, leaning it up like that. Because last year's bacon with that 300-pound hog, it was okay, but um, this is going to be much better. So what I like to do is I'm going to square it up a bit. And the only reason I'm doing that is because they fit in my little meat tubs better. And pieces like this right here, that's going to be my side meat. Or some people call it Midlands. Uh, that's going to be my side meat. And I will... This one right there. I'll salt that down. You got to make the video one time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'll, I, I'm trimming to go in that one. I'll salt that down for about a week. Just pack it in salt. And then I'll take it out, vacuum seal it, throw it in the freezer. And then we pull it out. I'll slice it like bacon. And, um, well, not all the time because blood pressure, but make your hands swell up. <laughs> um, and we'll use it in beans and stuff like that. But, yeah, man, look at that lean. Where was it? Right there. Mm, looks good. That's yeah. going to be good bacon. And that fits perfectly in my tub over here. So we'll we'll cure the bacon for about five, six, seven days in the fridge. Mm -hmm. And then I'll rig me up a little outdoor smoker, throw a little smoke to it, rinse it off, uh, get it cold again, real cold. Put it on my meat slicer. There you go. All right, break this down next. So right here, I did kind of a shoddy job, y'all. I was tired when I broke this thing down but there's an inner loin you can kind of feel it right there right up against the bone backbone that's your tenderloin just like on a deer and we're going to get that out and see right there that's a gland you don't know you ever clean many deer you see these little gray things those are glands a lot of people freak out when they see that, but that's all it is. I think my phone's vibrating, but whoever somebody's is. I'm not that important, so it's probably one of y'all. <laughs> Actually, right there's my loin. See, I kind of jacked up when I... See that? Pull right up. That's your tenderloin. And those are going to make some mighty fine breakfasts. And you can clean that up a little bit. And this, pack, this pig, I don't know if I said it on the camera yet, was 204 pounds hanging weight at one week shy of 180 days or six months. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and get my sirloin off over here. Actually, it's down here. Where is it? It's up here, right here. Right here at this last knuckle, you can kind of put a, let's see how easy this works. I'm gonna clean this up right here. Is this a sirloin? It's called a sirloin tip roast. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm on the right side for it. When you only do a couple of these a year, it takes a little while to remember. So basically, there's a, there's a knuckle right here, and most of the time you can take your knife and get through it, but So 
that's a sirloin tip roast is what that is. It's on the top end of the ham back here. I believe that's what you call that. It could be wrong. Somebody can correct me if they figure it out. But look, look at the fat cap. There's half inch. And so I don't have to do any extra trimming of that. That's, that's ready for a crock pot. And you can debone this all the way if you want to. Um, and I'll show you how to do that real quick because it's not that hard. You just follow the seams of the bone. Just follow the edge of the bone. When I first started butchering stuff was was deer. We're probably younger than that, squirrels and rabbits. And uh, that's kind of how I learned the basics. But so you can take a bone like this, clean it up if there's any dirt on it, uh, if you got any on it. And when I say dirt, that's your cavity going out of the pig. So when you're cutting around the anus back there to pull it. Sometimes you won't pull it just right and you'll get a little turd stuck in there and you gotta clean it out and then trim it out. Just like that. And so now your meat's clean. But that right there, we won't throw that away. We'll finish getting stuff off of it later to go into trimmings. But now you have a boneless roast to throw straight in the crock pot. And what I'll do, is I'm gonna trim this up a little bit because I need some fat for the grinder. And that's enough meat on that right there for four people. Um, unless you're glutton, but yeah. four people is enough. All right, moving on. Now we're going to extract the back strap. And I'm going to take a little bit of this fat off. And I pull the knife towards you. So always be careful <laughs> pulling a knife towards you. But I won't, I'm going to need some of this fat. So I'm getting some of it off. Plus, it just takes up freezer space. And you're, I'm not going to cook all that fat down when I'm cooking boneless pork chops. All right, so now we gotta peel this. I kind of jacked up my baby bikes yesterday, which I was disappointed in when I was um, taking off, when I was cutting him down. I, I used a, a Sawzall and I kind of got off kilter. So it's gonna be a little harder to piece this out. Well, once again, you're just, there's bone in here. Just keep your knife along the edge of it as you're separating that muscle. That kind of lets you see it a little bit better. You can push that bone away. And flip it over and follow the other side. And there's pork loin, which I'll um, slice up real fast. Get a little more of that fat off. Another reason you want it cold is because that fat hardens up. This makes it easier to process. 
And remember, this is home butchering, so it don't have to be 100% perfect. But I don't want a pork chop over about half to three quarter of an inch. And the reason for that is we're more into making it last. And so um, a portion like that of lean meat is about four ounces and that's sufficient for our meals. Now, occasionally I'll cut them three quarter inch or an inch or an inch and a quarter. I like that knife better, that old hickory for that. But look at that. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It is pretty neat. Um, lean, just a little bit of fat streaks running through it. And I'll go ahead and tell you, um, I've got 700 pounds of feed. And when I say feed, it's that is 75% ration, 15% hog pellet, um, all plant-based to 25% whole kernel corn. And I've got 700 pounds of feed in him from the time he was starting to get creep fed till the time he was killed yesterday. And I did the math last night, 60% is basically what you'll end up getting off of your hanging weight, which hanging weight was 205, right at it. So about 155 pounds of um, dressed weight. Came up to about, I got a buck 77 a pound in a whole hog. And um, that's not bad. I mean, yeah, you can buy them for 99 cents a pound once in a while in the store. But I can promise you that there are no girth promotants in this. And we've carried on a family tradition, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Well, that's what Hank Williams Jr. said when he smoked yeah. weed. <laughs> hey! <laughs> You know, my daddy almost got on Hank Williams Jr.'s bus uh, years ago. He and mama went to a concert. Hank was pretty much stoned and drunk during the concert. And mom and daddy ended up at the bus. And uh, those band members and Hank wanted daddy to get on the bus and go down the road with him. He almost left mama standing right there. <laughs> it's a good thing you didn't. I probably wouldn't be here. Yeah, I'm kidding. So, um, I jacked up the baby bikes, y'all. I ain't gonna lie to you. I jacked them up real bad. But I'm gonna salvage what I can here, and it's gonna be um, it's gonna be difficult to do that because you need to be able to cut them off. gonna cry over it uh, they'll still get cooked we may just break them down and put them in beans or something like that and I pulled that membrane off some people cook, cook it with it on there but I prefer it off completely You notice there's not much waste at all going on here. No. So, all right, so there's some halfway decent baby backs. You get to put them in this cooler like that. Me and the missus will partake of those one night. And this right here, I get trimmed out later for sausage. Okay, now, the final beast or piece is. the um, picnic and sh um, Boston butt 
shoulder roast. And I'm just going to trim a little here. There's a gland or two in a few spots you've got to, um, that's got a little dirt on it. I'm going to leave that, not poop, dirt. We almost lost a side. <laughs> Yesterday I was getting the um, one side off the gambrel. And my, my brother had to catch the other side. And I think he got it in the dirt just a tiny. So that all I'm doing right here is cutting out just a little bit of blood where I stuck him, some coagulated up in there. And when I'm talking about sticking him, after he was made immobile, you roll him over and right here, there the pigs laying on his back. I took a long knife like this and right up in here and it hits that, um, one of those main arteries, the main artery. First thing I'm gonna to do is take the collarbone out, the neck bone. <clears throat> like I said, it's been a little while. It's been over, over a year since I cleaned one. I did assist my brother Wesley several weeks ago. I kind of went and pointed when he was cleaning one that he had grown at his house. And uh, cause he was not confident in doing it himself. Cause I've got a little more experience. So my fingertips about froze off. <laughs> <laughs> so all you do is you start working this bone just like the other bones and just follow it and you kind of feel where you're going here feel ahead of yourself that way you're not just cutting blindly And there's your neck bone. Neck bone will be trimmed out later. Um, going into sausage, the bones will be cut down, going into beans. Okay, now that the neck bone's out of there, I'm gonna kind of trim this up a little bit. making sure that we haven't missed a gland or anything of that nature. I think most everything is up here in the front towards the neck and I've pretty much got all that out of there. So this is uh, just some excess around the neck and that's gonna go into sausage. This year we're making a Southern style breakfast sausage, a maple link sausage, and a chorizo, a Spanish chorizo, because I really like that one. Um, and we've got a 200 year old press that was my great, great, great grandfather's. I believe that's right. It was made back pre 1860, I believe. Uh, my dad gave it to me. He inherited it and he gave it to me here recently. Getting some of that out of there, that blood. I don't need that. Okay. Now, we'll get some of this fat cap off, just like we did on the loin. Like I said, there's not a ton of fat caps, so that's good. Always 
cut through the meat first prior to breaking your saw out. Now, see this bone right here? That's your shoulder bone. This is what you would call a Boston butt. And this side here, actually, this side here, I believe is the butt, this is the picnic. And so all I do is clean it up a little bit. And this is where you get a lot of your sausage off of just trimming. Of course, we're gonna use the hams as well. Okay. We are a family of three and don't need a butt that big. So, let's get that bone out of there. And all you gotta do is just follow the bone. Just keep your knife up against that bone. And that means less trim work for you later on. All right, so that bone's out. decent marbling in that. See, well, Lisa and I spend quite a bit of time today going back over these bones and getting every bit of lean off them we can. Because we don't want to waste what we've got here. So there's the roast. That's one roast. There you go. Shoulder roast for the crock pot. Shoulder roast for the crock pot. So what we'll do with this meat now, we'll put it in the freezer before we grind it. We'll let it get kind of hard. Now, you don't want to leave this picnic or this butt that big. And I'm moving backwards on which is the butt, which is the picnic. It all eats is all I know. Mm. <laughs> so we don't want one that big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that shank off. Cutting through the meat first. Let the saw do the work. And that will be and you can trim you can trim that out and um, put it into your beans, I mean, into your grind. But we like to keep them whole if we're gonna do a big pot of beans all day. Other thing cooked down, you got your meat and your beans all together. I actually did that last night. Um, Lisa cooked a, fit like a 15 bean soup. And um, I ate a bunch of it with jalapenos and everything else. Now, you can even separate this further if you want. Got some bone up in here. We 
just removing the other side of that shoulder bone. Some people make this look easy. This is not. To me, the shoulder bone is a pain in the butt. But it will come out. So we'll get trimmed out. For the home butcher, that ain't bad. You still got another roast right here you can work with. You can tie that up and put it in um, cast iron in the oven or crock brown it, put it in a crock pot, season it, roll it, tie it. it works pretty good that way. And that's, that's a pretty good sized piece of meat right there. Which is uh, for us to be pulled pork. And a lot of this that came off there is what you call jowl. And so it will go into grind. Everything I cut off of there. But that's how you break down a pig and just repeat on the other side. Ain't nothing to it. You get, I mean, you've raised your meat and you know, 155 pounds of pork. That's going to last you at least six months. If two or three people, you know, yeah. uh, family of, Seven, eight? Eight, yeah. You're probably going to need to kill a couple 250 pounders a year. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's how you do it. And just come back and trim all the meat off and get her done. Yeah. You got like six dollars. He's on, he's the only board. Yeah. Hopefully you got like a, like a dog that's a board. Well, the dogs are, are male too, but. Oh, okay. <laughs> that don't really count. You got to balance the <laughs> testosterone out. Yeah. I'm the same way. I'm, I'm only male, you know, four girls and I have four women. So guys, thanks for hanging out with us at the Piney Woods Homestead today as we showed you how to break down a hog. It's uh, kind of intimidating, but if you take your time, you can do it. Some really good videos out there on it other than mine. Uh, I'd recommend the Bearded Butchers. They've got uh, a nice breakdown of it. I'll, if I can figure out how to put a link in this thing, I'll do that so you can see it. But I, I use that every time before I'm going to process to get me a refresher. Hit the old like, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. If you have, we appreciate you. Appreciate Carolina Hill Country being here today with us. Yeah. See y'all. <laughs> and? Just <laughs> say your name, bro. Danny. And Danny. All right. All right Later please. on.